Shalom everyone and good evening from Galilee, from Israel. I'm Amir Tzalfati. Today it's November 7th, 2023. We are exactly one month since the terrible, horrible massacre of October 7th. And at the very last day of our Feast of Sukkot, our tabernacles, and um, we are going to address uh, that and what happened over the last month. But more so, what is the situation on the ground right now? What's going on in Gaza? What's going on in Israel? What's going on on the north with Hezbollah? And what is going on around the world in Europe, in UK, America? Are we even close to a world war? We'll talk about all these things, not before we're going to start with a prayer. Father, I thank you so much that you are the Lord God of Israel, that you are the one that will never, ever let your children completely uh, die and uh, go to waste. Father, you said, I am God, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed oh sons of jacob so father we thank you and we bless you for this promise we know that this has been a very 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 difficult month for this nation and also for the whole world everything that happens here shakes the entire planet as it should because this is the place where you set your name upon so father now we ask that you will bless this time of us looking into world events through the lens of your word and of your promises. We thank you and we bless you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. So shalom everyone. Again, this is Amir Tzalfati. I'm live from Galilee, from actually from home. I managed to put this uh, backdrop on the TV screen behind me uh, in the living room. I still need to be very close to a bomb shelter right here next to my house. Uh, next to the living room here inside my house. Um, this, the, um, I guess the danger of rockets is still all around us, but the rocket launch from Gaza subsided significantly as the Israeli military is already deep inside the northern part of the Gaza Strip as we are right now 30 days since that terrible, terrible massacre. Now, you uh, you may not understand, but the earth is shaking all around southern Israel in the last few nights. Let me give you a taste of what Gaza looks like every evening in the last few days. Take a look at this one. This is Gaza. That's just a couple nights ago. Last night was the same. Tonight might even be harder. We have encircled the city of Gaza, the Gaza city area, from the north and from the west along the coast and from the south. Completely encircled Gaza. As you can clearly see on the map right now, Israeli troops, Israeli tanks, Israeli naval ships on the sea all around this city and where we believe the commanders and the main headquarters of Hamas are located underneath three of the main hospitals there. Take a look at this map, this map from Reuters, and you can clearly see the Israeli uh, military entered from the north all the way and moved along the coast, as well as from the east into uh, the coast. And so right now, the Gaza Strip is completely divided into two. And while we maintain humanitarian aid and help to the southern part, we are urging, we are urging the people in the north to move down south from day one. We told them, we know where the terrorists are. We know where the headquarters are. We know where they're hiding. Therefore, if you don't want to get hurt, leave and move to the south. Unfortunately, 
um, Hamas did the tactics that Hamas is doing, which is using their own people as human shields. And if they move, then they shoot to kill. Take a look at what the uh, one of the roads before we managed to secure the area for the uh, people of Gaza to move south. Take a look at what happened to those who tried to leave northern Gaza down south and Hamas saw them. And look what Hamas did to the people. This is someone who was riding a motorcycle along the, the, the main road. Look at them. Bodies of children, of women, of men, all of them, some of them are holding white flags because they wanted to leave. All of this, by the way, you can clearly see there is no sight of air, air, um, you know, air assault or anything. This, we all know that they did it. In fact, not only we know, even Arab reporters know that. Even um, uh, Mahmoud Taha, look at the, what he, the... Uh, journalist from the UK, the Arab journalist from the UK, take a look at what he wrote in his Twitter account, uh, knowing exactly who did what. He is very well connected. And and uh, you can, I don't know if we have that uh, photo of the tweet um, of uh, what he uh, said, but if, if we don't, um, I will, uh, I'll just read it to you because this is, uh, this is quite phenomenal. Um, that's what he actually said. He said, breaking news just now, Hamas snipers have reportedly, and this is Amjad Daha. It's a very well-known British, um, Arab British journalist with millions of followers. He said, Hamas snipers have reportedly killed dozens of children and women on the streets, targeting those attempting to travel from north to south Gaza and those displaying white flags as a sign of peace. Similar acts have been have previously been attributed to Palestinian Hezbollah and Hezbollah terrorists in Syria. They do not want civilians to leave. They want to use them as human shields and kill anyone who attempts to leave. Hamas terrorists in Gaza will, as usual, blame Israel because it is easy and there is media that accepts this propaganda. Well, it, it wasn't really that hard for us to prove that we didn't do it. We were just not there. And this is exactly what brought us to have this heavy bombardment that night in order to completely secure that area, move in with our tanks and with our own ground forces, and take a look at what happened when we clear the area from Hamas terrorists and we managed to secure, we managed to risk our soldiers to secure the lives of the Palestinian civilians so they can move peacefully from the northern part to the southern part. Take a look at this. This is the Israeli tanks and look at the thousands with white flags marching uninterruptedly, peacefully, without being attacked, all the way from the north to the south. This, a month after the massacre, this is the picture you have to understand. Gazans are abandoning Hamas, leaving that area, not willing to be human shields anymore. I've got testimonies of uh, fistfights and and a lot of physical uh, um, confrontations between uh, Hamas people in some bomb shelters and the civilians who said, we're, we're out of here. They wouldn't let them go. In some cases, Hamas put booby trap um, blockades. And when the civilians try to reach and move it, they blew up. Um, diabolic, demonic, satanic, that's who they are. They don't care. In fact, Take a look at what their leader said about how many people must die in order for Hamas. Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh, whose net worth is billions of dollars, he is now in Qatar. He said, women, children, elderly must die in Gaza to help our fight against Israel. That's what he said. And that's the tragedy in this whole thing. There are millions of people around the world that do not know that. Millions of people that are fed by TikTok. TikTok, that is the best way 
to manipulate the minds of our youngsters. It's all manipulated and orchestrated by China. It is also um, funded by Iran and Russia to create misinformation, disinformation, to destabilize Western governments, Western societies in the free world. And that is why we see the thousands of people that are marching in the streets of Berlin, of uh, Paris, of Rome, of London, and of Boston, New York, Los Angeles, and more. That's what we have. They don't know the truth. They believe the lie. They believe the propaganda that is sold to them through TikTok and other means. Now, I also want you to understand that uh, as we move in into Gaza by the thousands of our soldiers, we're talking about infantry and engineering corps, we're talking about tanks, we're talking about paratroops, and we're talking about people, um, you know, people from the sea and from the air, of course, we find more and more and more war crimes conducted by Hamas. We find rocket launchers and shafts of tunnels in hospitals and clinics, in kindergartens and schools, in playgrounds, in mosques, in, I mean, name it. Uh, look at this playground. We, right there, we found um, rocket launchers. In fact, uh, just a few minutes ago, the IDF spokesperson uh, uploaded a video from today, uh, a video from today that shows a Ferris wheel, shows, an, you know, some, some, uh, playground for children and take a look at this video it's very disturbing see the soldiers are there they understand that this very innocent place is not that innocent as they move into this area that's why by the way it takes us time to move inch by inch look at this this is the ferris wheel that was built on top of one jewish town that used to be there before 2007 take a look at this shaft of a terror tunnel that we just exposed right next to it. You see, this is a terror tunnel. From these places, they shoot rockets, they shoot anti-tank missiles, they shoot mortar shells, um, they throw grenades, and they just kill people. They, uh, they And that's, that's what we're dealing with. These are our troops. Our troops are moving with dogs that are finding explosives. Um, we're moving literally inch by inch because we are talking about the, the largest terrorist um base on planet earth the most booby trap place on planet earth every place we go to we find hundreds of shafts of tunnels we found tons of weapons of maps we took over some of their headquarters we found maps we found tunnels, we found rockets and hand grenades. And, and look, I'm telling you, for every $10 they receive in aid, nine went to terrorism and only one maybe went to their own people. Unbelievable. We've never seen so many. We knew about tunnels, but we didn't know they have that many shafts in so many places. Uh, the tunnels under the ground goes for miles. But we didn't know they have every, literally every 20, 40 uh, meters a shaft. Um, the shafts are in every other house. Uh, over 25,000 houses were already destroyed and we're still finding more and more and more. Most of the Gazans were actually living on rockets and explosives and tunnel of terror tunnels. Unbelievable. All they did for the last 20 years is store up more weapons and more rockets and more explosives in their children and their women and their sick people in their hospital. All of that were the human shields. Now, make no mistake, folks, right now, the Israeli military is getting closer and closer and closer to the three main hospitals because we know that this is the headquarters. By the way, take a look at the, this Qatari hospital. Uh, we, we found, of course, we get a lot of intelligence from the terrorists that we find alive, apart from the hundreds that we've killed so far. But this is the, this, what you see right now is the, this is the uh, uh, courtyard of the Qatari Hamad hospital. 
that's a shaft of a terror tunnel. I don't know if we have a, a, a video, but we surely have those photos that you can see. And ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about um, how Hamas is using civilians. And we find more and more of those. We found launchers that are d directly attached to the the, the, the the electric wires are leading into a mosque. So the launcher is outside. The person that activates the, 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 the launch is inside the mosque. They think that we don't know. We decided to take off the gloves and we destroy mosques because they're not anything but terror, uh, terror bases. Now, we do not destroy hospitals. And that's why we still have left those three main hospitals intact. But our soldiers are advancing because we're going to take over the hospitals. And once we get there, we're going to go and get into those tunnels and pull those leaders out. Now, I want you to know, while we do not bomb hospitals, they do bomb hospitals. And our hospital in this town of Ashkelon, Barzilai, has been bombed almost every other, every other day. And the damages to our hospitals are not being shown because this is something we don't want to show to the world. Uh, obviously, Israeli hospitals, uh, uh, you know, uh, are strategic and we, we do not want to show uh, what happened. But uh, I can tell you the Barzilai hospital is targeted and is damaged. And unlike us, that we do not touch any hospital, we, we destroy things around. We try to get the civilians away so they don't stay there once we enter that compound within not not anything more than 72 hours we're going to reach the shifa hospital and the indonesian hospital and the qatari hospital and all of those hospitals we've shown we've proven to the world they were built on tunnels when they were constructed in fact the indonesian hospital we have pictures of when before the hospital was built the Qatari hospital, the same. These are fairly new hospitals that were built on top of an existing system of tunnels. Unbelievable. Now, the UAE just offered to build a field hospital in the southern part of Gaza. Probably it's going to be the first hospital not built on tunnels. But I will tell you, folks, we're getting there. And we're going to get them and we're going to pull them out. And while all of this is happening in Israel... There's an amazing, tremendous uh, wave of patriotism, unity, solidarity. Of course, there's always the crazy people in the, the, the fringes. But, but all in all, most of the people who thought that we will ever have peace with those savages woke up from that dream to realize that that's it. Enough is enough. You know, uh, a lot of people don't know that this war did not start on October 7. This is an illusion. In fact, the war goes back to November 29, 1947. I want you to see the map that the United Nations drew in order to have that portion of Palestine divided between the Jews and the Arabs. Take a look at this. Everything that you see in orange is actually Arab. Everything that you see in blue is Jewish. We didn't get Jerusalem, Samaria, and Judea. We didn't get, in fact, most of what we got, if we, you really think about it, a lot of it is desert in the south. But because we just survived the Holocaust and because we, we, we knew that we have to start somewhere, we said, yay. But guess what? November 29, 1947, the Arabs said nay. By the way, that's the most generous offer they, could, they, they ever got, ever in history. And they said no to it. And from that point on, it, they lost every war and it becomes smaller and smaller offer. And trust me, right now, after October 7th, there is no more offer. I don't think a single Israeli is going to offer them any state on any piece of land. If anything, we are now reconsidering going back to resettle Gaza with Jewish settlements there, what we used to have until 2006, I think, or seven, when Ariel Sharon had the disengagement plan. Let me tell you something, folks. 
we were there. We flourished. We thrived. And our own government pulled us out of there thinking that we're going to let them control this area and turn it into Singapore. Well, no, it wasn't turned into Singapore. They, they could if they wanted. No. Their aim is not to have peace and live next to us. Their aim is not to have peace because they want to live instead of us. They keep saying that and we keep ignoring that. We don't understand that. The PLO was founded in 1964 before Israel had a single square inch of Gaza or the West Bank. We never had it. We only got it in 1967. And so their Palestine Liberation Organization was about to liberate everything, not just Judea, Samaria, and Gaza. When they tell you two-state solution is what we want, they bluff you. Or they forget to tell you it's not a Jewish state and an Arab state. They want an Arab state and they want a mixed Jewish Arab state. They don't, if you tell them the word Jewish state, they will reject it on the spot. It's an abomination to them from a religious perspective. You understand that? They'll never accept it. We have to come to the grips and to, to understand this is a religious, uh, uh, um, you know, issue here that we have. And, um, uh, this uh, uh, conflict that we have has nothing to do with land. We pulled out of Gaza. Gaza is theirs. Not a single Israeli lives in Gaza. We, if anything, we supply them work. We gave them water and electricity. What did we get instead or in return? Slaughter of our babies, of our children, women, and men. And by the way, most of the Places that they entered and they butchered them in their homes are people who actually were left-wing pro-Palestinians for two states. They helped them. They used to take them from Gaza, drive them to Israeli hospitals for medical care. They used to drive them back. They used to uh, do fundraising for clothing and other things. Listen, that's why the left in Israel is in such a crisis right now. It wasn't the settlers in the West Bank. It wasn't the religious Jews that uh, were. This was the people that were the best friends of the Palestinians who, who had in their minds the hope that one day we will live side by side with them and both will be happy. They're the ones that were butchered. They're the ones that were killed and burned alive. And they're the ones that were raped and beheaded by those savages. So just you understand right now in Israel, like never before, look, I'm telling you, it's hard. I'm watching those videos. I'm watching those photos. I don't sleep at night. I, I, I have a lot of bad dreams. I have a lot of anxiety, a lot of this is something that I will have to deal with for many, many more years. But I will tell you through this whole thing, I see the greatest, greatest opportunity for Israel to finally get together, seek its God, not be ashamed of being Jewish people, and Jews will return back to Israel They say, as they see that they can be as liberal as they want all around the world. They'll hate them because they're Jews. I see the return of the Jews, the flourishing of Israel. The, uh, it's going to be an amazing thing. Now, of course, I know the end of the story. I know that there will be another big war that God will win for us. And I know there will be a fake peace with a fake Messiah and another terrible trib tribulation. But I will tell you, uh, this is a war we're about to win. And the reason why no other country comes to help the Palestinians, of course, Hezbollah is not a country. And trust me, take a look at Nasrallah in his speech um, last Saturday. The whole world was holding its breath. We all thought there was going to be another front. We thought there was be, it's going to be a world war. He hyped this speech. He gave some teasers and promos. Everybody thought this is it. The, the stock markets were all plunging. And guess what happened? At the moment where he could deliver, 
he actually right there in front of the camera said we are doing our job but we're not going to start a war we're encouraging everybody else to but we are not we uh, we do our job in the north uh, but uh it's the palestinians war it's their thing we and then he said something astonishing and remember i told you that a couple times already that hamas surprised iran and hezbollah hamas surprised everybody because hamas jumped the gun too early hezbollah admitted we had no idea about october 7. they knew that there was the grand plan of doing that that, uh, that thing one day but they didn't know about October 7th. In fact, let me tell you even more. I posted on Telegram on um, uh, the British uh, the British uh, newspaper, in the, uh, I think Maybe it's in, in Independent, I posted today. Um, and um, it, it's amazing, they, they, they keep, they tell you over there um, exactly from, from, you know, all the investigation of, of what happened we know how they managed to keep the secret that long um and um it's called a deadly de uh, cascade how secret hamas attack orders were passed down at the last minute the guardian excuse me the guardian newspaper and it's on telegram if you want so it's amazing uh we they found out that at 4 a.m. everybody were called to the mosque for a prayer. Nobody knew about this. I'm talking about the Hamas operated. Only at 5 a.m. the orders were given first to the commanders of the battalions, and then of the of the companies, and then to the operatives. And by six o'clock they were armed and started the assault. They reached the fence by 6:29. And the whole thing started. They surprised not only us, but they surprised Hezbollah and surprised Iran. They surprised all the other proxies. And unfortunately, they surprised us. Now, of course, if you really ask some of the soldiers that were stationed on the border, they've been complaining for the longest time that they see they, that they're getting too close to the, uh, to the fence. But it was always... Uh, agricultural workers and the tractor that you saw was there already because it was part of the they put us to sleep and by the way the secret service admits that they were caught by surprise the israeli major military intelligence admitted that a year ago they stopped listening to the devices of to the communications of hamas they thought it's a waste of time it, what we thought during the night that probably there is something that might be one more exercise and by the way we're the, we're not the only one who thought it's an exercise hamas operatives themselves thought it's an exercise only between 5 to 6 a.m they were actually told it's not an exercise the real deal and then 20 minutes later the rockets were flying the mortars were uh, were uh, sent and the uh, drones were sent the snipers were shooting all of their cameras and everything started. And I'm gonna tell you folks, it was something that we're gonna uh, definitely uh, investigate, but I, but I will tell you this, I am sick to my stomach when I hear all those wise people thinking that Israel actually planned this. How dare you, shame on you. This is our second Holocaust. This is the most traumatic thing we've ever had since the establishment of the state of Israel. What kind of a sick mind who maybe wants to some gain some followers on, on, or, or likes, so I'm not sure, will tell you that it's America and Israel that plotted this whole thing. Are you out of your mind? Hamas, it's almost, this is classic Holocaust denier, deniers, by the way. The Nazis say that they did it. They admit that they did it. They are proud that they did it. They documented that they did it. And some people still say that it's not. It's the Jewish plot to get a state. I, if you say that Israel plotted this whole thing, you are just like those who say that the Jews plotted the Holocaust in order to get a state. 
Shame on you. This is exactly what all the white supremacists are saying. This is exactly what all those racists are saying. This is something that I do not expect from Christians. And if you hold that mindset, either, either you need to repent or run and stay away from me, my people, my country, because you're spreading Holocaust denial. This is terrible. And I can't believe that I hear that from Christians. It's sickening. It, I want to throw up when I see that. Shame on you for spreading stuff like that. It's not from God. It's from the devil. You don't hear it from God. You hear it from the devil. You have a relationship with the devil, if that's what you think. Now, this is uh, what happened. That's where we are now. 30 days later, a month later, here we are in Israel. And another thing that I've watched lately, there's another wave of uh, interesting Christians that are coming to Israel in the height of the post-traumatic experience that we are all going through. And what they do, they go to, for a street evangelism, American style. Of course, in Israel, you don't do that. Uh, if you are smart and if you study, if you know history, you know that the approach to the Jewish people should be different. We have, we, I was approached differently. Um, People that know how to do evangelism, they understand exactly. Anyway, so some of them show up in Israel and they did, were not accepted that greatly uh, and they were offended. So they pulled their phones and upload a video bashing the Jews that reject Jesus. And I'm telling you, what kind of a sick mind will ever win a Jewish soul by bashing him online and causing all those anti-Semites to immediately join and 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 you know comment their toxic comments online. I don't understand that. Obviously, you were not there to evangelize. You were there to get likes and to get followers, to get attention. If your heart is evangelism for the Jewish people, the last thing you need to do is come right after they have such a tragedy. And think that you go in the name of and spread the name of Yeshua and you will be welcomed and the red carpet is going to be uh, rolled out for you. You don't understand something. That's not how it works here. And uploading videos like that, not only that it's not serving the purpose of winning the souls, it's actually with exactly the opposite. It's also from the devil. And let me tell you something, folks. Paul was thrown out of almost every synagogue. That he went to everyone probably except of berea where they were fair-minded and they looked into scriptures and obviously make sure that what he says fits the scripture but the tradition was not blinding them but you have to understand something paul understood that they are blinded by tradition and paul gathered the leaders of the jewish people in rome in the last chapter of the book of acts and he said not that i have anything against my nation but for the hope of Israel, I am bound in chain. He, he said, look, they wanted to kill me, but I have nothing against my nation. And then when he wrote the epistle to the Romans, he said, Con concerning the gospel, they are your enemies. But concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles is coming. And then all Israel will be saved. Paul never, ever came against Israel as if they're his enemy just because they rejected Christ. He saw the blindness because he was blind also. He was there. He knew exactly what is blinding them. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 says only through the Lord that this veil is taken. There is a veil. But I want to tell you something. You have to stop doing that online to shame them because you don't understand something. What happened right now, this trauma that happened right now, causes so many secular Jews to run towards Orthodox Judaism, to run towards keeping this and doing this, keeping the Sabbath and, and saying this and saying that. The last thing that you will get from them right now is, oh, I want to believe in Jesus. You have to understand something. The Jewish people were killed for being Jews. So right now, even those that were ashamed for being Jews are proud of being Jews because they understand that's the only thing I have to hold on to. So if you really want to evangelize, you don't come with a iPhone and 
Report to the world how bad they treated you. Grow up and understand that that's not the way. That's not the way. I also want you to know that there's about 500% increase in anti-Semitism around the world, especially in Europe. In Lyon, France, a Muslim guy came, knocked on the door of a house of a Jewish lady. She opened the door, 30-year-old. He stabbed her twice in her chest. She's badly wounded, by the way. And then he sprayed on her door a swastika. I don't know, do we have the photo of the swastika on the door of the woman in Lyon, France? This is, uh, she almost got killed. I mean, she, thankfully, she survived this. But uh, this is something that uh, we had in Lyon, France. Uh, and of course, this weekend in uh, uh, Westlake, uh, California, there was a pro-Hamas parade. Um, they saw a proud Jewish guy, 65 year old. That, yeah, that's, by the way, this is the photo from Lyon, France. Now, a few days ago, there was a Jewish guy, um, 65 years old. Look at him. He's standing with an Israeli flag with his wife. Both of them are Jews in their mid-60s. And the Palestinian protester came, knocked his head with a megaphone. He lost balance, fell. And uh, from that injury, now, uh, he was taken to the hospital and today was pronounced dead. In fact, probably yesterday for you guys. He's dead. He died from the fall as he was hit by a megaphone by this pro-Palestinian thing. And by the way, they continued their rally after this man was evacuated while there was still a bloody spot there. I don't get it. Now, it starts like that, by the way, in another place in Ohio, I think, a Palestinian woman drove a car into a place thinking it's a Jewish center. So she drove her car into it. Unbelievable. Now, it starts with those very violent um, protests, but it will soon turn into something that will be inspired by Hamas. They admire Hamas. They, in, in so many of them, so many influencers, so many doctors and lawyers and nurses, you should see what they posted on social media. That was the, the best day of our life. This was, we had hope during that, a day of rape and slaughter and beheading and burning alive of babies is their day of hope and joy. It's bloodthirsty. It's terrible. It's diabolic. Now, I will tell you something. Even there, I see that God is going to use it because the vast majority in Europe as well as in America, is not into all of this. This is what you see now is the combination of toxic, radical left that is brainwashed in the universities together with this Muslim um, diabolic ideology of wiping the Jews and killing them. Now, it's funny because the other day, and I posted that on Telegram, the other day there was a guy that was standing with a uh, with a um, sign against uh, sex change for children. So this Antifa guy, who is now protesting with the Palestinians, is arguing with him that this is terrible because if you are not giving them the sex change, they are going to kill themselves. And then two Palestinian girls from the same rally, together with this Antifa guy, they show up. And they actually side with the guy with the sign. <laughs> you saw that the only common thread between the radical left that is pro-LGBTQ, whatever, and those Palestinians, the only thing that is tying together is not gender, and it's not weather, and it's not democracy or anything. It's hatred towards Israel. That's it. Because on every other level, they don't agree. It's unbelievable. It's so diabolic that every crazy person from all fringes is coming together right now, walking in the streets, saying from the river to the sea, Palestine should be free. What river and what sea?
once you say Jordan River at the Mediterranean from the river to the Sea Palace, you're basically calling for the annihilation of the state of Israel. And not only that, you're telling a lie. There has never, ever been a Palestinian state in the history of planet Earth. It's not going to be free. It was never theirs to begin with. Learn some history. Now, so um, this is what's going on. And by the way, um, look look at those two. Uh, let me show you more about the Palestinian propaganda. Because it drives me crazy because people can't see through. Um, take a look at this uh, photo op of uh, children that, that they put there. Uh, so they put them on the floor as if they're dead. And then they forget that the camera is still there and they wake up and they move and they change position. They forget that it's the same people. Then there's all three were supposed to be dead. Another, another, uh, in another uh, white phosphorus bombs, they said that we're using and they show pictures. And they're telling the whole world, look, this is a war crime. They just forget to tell you that this white phosphorus bomb that Israel is using, that photo is actually not from Israel. It's from Syria. It's from the civil war in Syria where Arabs kill Arabs. And of course, who cares? Because Jews don't kill Arabs, so we don't protest. It's Arabs who kill Arabs. It's Bashar al-Assad who slaughtered millions of his people. And no one said a word. No one demonstrated in London or Paris. No one marched in Berlin, New York, Los Angeles, because it's not Jews. Why should we? Unbelievable. Look at Mr. Uh, Pollywood. Mr. Pollywood is, uh, we've seen him everywhere. Even they put this thing, they put a lot of ketchup, and Mr. Pollywood is even there. He's everywhere. He's been everything you can think of. This guy is working for Hamas for propaganda. On every site, of, as if something happened, you see him. One time he was like almost dead. The next day he was walking beautifully in the streets. One day he's happy. One day he's crying. One day he's holding a baby. The other day he's a, he's a radiologist. He's a doctor. Unbelievable. And the world is buying all of this. Um, you know, this um, propaganda is also... Um, they, they hide the fact that they are very expert in killing their own people. Um, I don't know, but, uh, but Amjad Taha showed that uh, Hamas killed Gazans, and when the world ignored that, they killed Israelis. The pictures here, and look at the pictures that you see in his tweet, show Hamas, they, they actually show what life was like under Hamas terrorists in Gaza. Every Gazan who opposes Hamas is called, he's called an Israeli spy and is killed. And do you want this for Gazans, Hamas sympathizers? Do you still believe what Hamas says about any story? That's it. They're dragging them in the street, tied to motorcycle, their bodies. This is a Palestinian accused to be in, working with us. Why? Because he's opposing Hamas. And they're dragging them in the streets. They're killing them. And one of the funny thing is there are all this LGBTQ support for Palestinians. They don't understand LGBTQ is forbidden there. They'll kill you. They'll shoot you. They'll shoot your kneecaps. They, they, <laughs> unbelievable. It's not allowed there. How can they stand for those who actually not tolerate them and but kill them? Look, the, it's a diabolic blindness that we see right now. And you have to understand, Christian people fall into that. You see, you have those, the usual replacement theology that have always opposed the Israeli presence in this land, and they think we should share it with those that don't want to share it with us. Then there is the white supremacists. Oh, the white supremacists, I'm sorry, behind me. I told you it's the television at home. Then there's the white supremacists. And then, of course, there is uh, those people that are now convincing themselves uh, that we're behind this whole thing. It's the same thing. I don't understand why, but it is what it is. And it's very, 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 very sad. 
Now, um, let me show you that there is worldwide anti-Semitism. Take a look at this tag on a clothing in a clothing store in South Africa right now. Uh, quite disturbing to see in, in a store like that. Shopping in South Africa these days. Take a look. It says, I have blood on my hands. Boycott um, the apartheid Israel. This is in a regular store now make no mistake there are so many wonderful south africans that love israel support israel and uh, they don't agree with their government and i know that it's very heartbreaking to see all of that um look um it's getting late and uh, i i think that uh, i want to warn you about telegram look First of all, there are ads on Telegram. It's not me, it's Telegram. So I'm not adding, I'm not advertising anything. But second, there's a lot of fake Telegram channels that have my picture, use my name, and they write you messages. Uh, they offer you some crypto deals and stuff like that. Stay away, it's not me, I don't write you, I don't do all of these things. Only stick to the official account. We're trying to verify it with a blue verification mark so you will know what's mine and what's not mine. Um, there's a lot of friends in Israel. Uh, there's a lot of friends for Israel. The German vice chancellor gave an amazing speech where the obligation of, of Germany to stand for Israel. The Emirati minister that was, uh, you know, uh, rebuking the uh, she rebuked the um, the massacre and now the Palestinians are bashing her uh, and there's a lot of people who who, who stand for Israel in in Vienna uh, twenty thousand people were uh, there and across uh, in the Netherlands and I know that they're doing that in some places uh, in America in America as well so. We do acknowledge that and we thank you for standing for the truth. Um, America is sending unprecedented force of B-1 uh, bombers. Uh, a, uh, also, we have um, the Florida, Ohio uh, type uh, nuclear operated uh, submarine that is, I, I believe there's more of them around here. America is definitely here with a powerful military presence that will that leaves no other room for imagination that there's a very good chance folks that if iran is going to up its game against american bases we might even see a u.s uh a u.s um operation against iran we don't know that but it might even then evolve into a world war because if iran is attacked russia is going to be angry china is going to be angry and china will use that to attack um uh, taiwan as american uh forces are stretched too far and too uh too wide and too thin so i don't know what's going to happen i know one thing i am not afraid i trust the god of israel i trust that he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. I trust that he is in control. I know that we're going to beat Hamas. I know that we're going to knock Hezbollah also and move them all the way up north uh, of the Litani River. Folks, a lot of challenging months are ahead of us, but please, I want you to stay focused, stay close to the word of God, stay close to the things of God and do not be tempted to fall into conspiracy and, pro and, and sensationalism. It is alarming to see how many Christians are nowadays into those things. Just everything is there for you. What else do you need to know? The hatred towards Israel has been there since Pharaoh and it continues all the way until now. You don't have to think that Israel is behind anything. I mean, we have enough hatred towards us to, 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 to fuel every future war that even the Bible is still telling us about. So remember that, of course. And remember, God is in full control. I'll keep you posted on Telegram. And if you don't know how to get it, 
will show you shortly a short video. Let me pray. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha, Yair Adonai pana velecha v'yichuneka, Yisa Adonai pana velecha v'yasem v'cha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace. B'shem Yeshua in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. Sorry for all of this behind me. Samsung is not my, I'm not giving any free advertisement. Here's the television behind me. It's, once I move to connect, I'll have a team and uh, everything will be way more professional. I'm sorry for that. Thank you. I love you. God bless you. And watch this video, How to Get Telegram. Bye-bye. Join the Amir Sarfari and Behold Israel channel on Telegram. Here you will receive daily updates and audio messages from Amir. You can also take part in our community and reply with comments. Getting started is easy. Simply download Telegram from the App Store, then visit the Behold Israel Telegram channel in your browser. From there, click Preview Channel, then click Join. That's it. See you on Telegram.